Good morning, folks. We've got solar activity, rare earthquake, top science news in multiple key categories, and a catch-up video you may have missed from earlier this year. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were mostly quiet following the eruption we showed yesterday. Let's start there and get a better look in multiple wavelengths since it occurred right before the morning show. Hopefully you can see both the compact dense plasma ejection and the widespread effect of that electromagnetic release on the surrounding corona. We're heading next to SOHO Corona Graphs where the C2 and C3 cameras confirm that the eruption is headed about 90 degrees away from Earth. Something to watch today, right side here, massive filament is lifting and destabilizing. It may slide down, collapse, erupt, or shift surge to the incoming active regions. This is our top solar watch today. Most interesting quake of the last day was just off the coast of Australia. Not a scary event, but rare in this location as it's been a few years since one of this size hit here. The 2019 quake was the largest in this region on record. Let's go to the science stories and begin with a radio look at stellar disks. In a nod to the Event Horizon Telescope, I'd like to remind everyone that just because you see an empty circle in the middle doesn't mean nothing is there. Stars are radio loud and they just selected a wavelength that wouldn't show the central star for that one, which is a bit less kajiggery than was used to make that now famous black hole image that also isn't telling us what's really in the middle. In that vein, we're finding fast central bars of galaxies continue to challenge the paradigm of dark matter. And that's going to be a theme today as the second cosmological principle violation paper we've seen in two weeks hits on one of the foundational characterizations of that dark matter model. Again, not in a good way. And folks, the author here wanted everyone to know that his call for a paradigm shift was rejected from numerous journals with gatekeeper philosophy. It's a good rundown of the need to get rid of dark matter. Only fault I can find is the preference for modified Newtonian dynamics. Anyway, you remember the video we did on May 5th showing where the failures and needed improvements in climate models can be found. Little note on A4 here is the cloud uncertainty is not lost on the scientists. They know how much cloud uncertainties need to be improved. Solid plan here, along with the article. Up next, a well-written piece on how the oceans bring us back. After catastrophes, the oceans are able to return to atmospheric regulation and helpful productivity long before they regain their previous levels of biodiversity. After the injury, the healing begins. Last but not least, the most detailed and minutiae heavy study on magnetic sense in birds finds it is actually much like seeing the fields. This isn't going to shock observers or anyone who knows about magnetic migration, but it furthers the understanding and allows us to step back for a moment. Folks, in that disaster playlist that I beg you guys to watch almost every day, and which can answer about 99% of the disaster questions asked in the comment section, scroll down to where we are falling into a storm, magnetic risk denial debunked. This one brings us back to the biosphere challenges of the cyclical magnetic excursion of Earth, what we're about to endure again, and then you realize all the successful risk identification is based on UV exposure and climate change. They've never even considered the migration-driven challenges on the magnetosensitive species, not to mention those above and below them in the food chain. We greatly appreciate your support. That is a great episode in the series, by the way. Watch it. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.